Thanks for watching Lessons in Minutes with J. Lee. Like, share, and don't forget to subscribe. So today we're going to look at the ePortfolio. And that's the ePortfolio that was created in Google Sites. I'm going to give you some organization tips. Now, I'm going to go into demo page and I'll be looking at a few things like inserting the button to say previous page. So I want to show you how to link it to other pages. So you could link to previous page if you want. You can link to URLs if you want. You can make the link, right? So here we go. I'm going to show you how to create a button. So the button can use the link to other pages or you can use the button to make a link to other URLs. So here we go. And I'm going to call this um, button YouTube. And then I am going to get an external link to link right there. So I'm going to type YouTube, select YouTube there. And say, for example, this is what I want to share. So I will copy the link and then go back to my workspace. Go back to my workspace and I'm going to paste the link. Select, insert, and now it is created. This, of course, remember you can pull it to put it wherever you want to. You can make the button bigger if you want by doing that, or you could keep it at the size at which it was. You can edit the button if you want by selecting it. You can have it as outline. This is what it would appear as outline, as text. That is what it would appear just like that. I'm gonna take it back to field. Having it as field, will basically pick up the color theme that you are using. So you notice the red is highlighted there because that's a color theme that I am using. Now, what if it was linked to the wrong item? You can go to edit, select the pencil edit button and you can change the name if you want. You can change the link. For example, I'm gonna delete that link and I want to link it to a page that is a part of the site and that's how it is done. So once you select the edit button, you go to link, you delete the one that you don't want and you basically search for the one that you would want and select it and then select update. All right. Um, instead of say, for example, creating separate button you want to duplicate, you can always um, duplicate the section. Remember, you will just select this icon to duplicate. I'm gonna show you now how to add link to text. I don't have a text yet, so I'm gonna insert the text, calling this just a random name. Say, for example, I'll call this next. Right. What you'll have to do is to highlight the text that you want to add the link to. Then in your task pane, you select insert link. And if it is that the link is to a page that is already located in your site, then you could just go ahead and answer the page that you want to link it to. Of course, you could use the text as well to say go to next page and you link it to the respective page that would follow this particular page. So I am going to add the link to the same URL that I used earlier and select apply. Okay, so once you add the link to the text, the text will be underlined. You can change, you can edit that if you want. You can remove the underline from it. You can change the color of the text, of course, if you want, if you want to make it pronounced, right? And uh, that is basically adding link to text. If I should go to preview mode, then 
let's look at how the link will work. So you select the link and it will take you to, you select the tab basically and take you to the respective link. Um, the previous one was linked to a page, even though it's labeled YouTube, it's just, it was linked to a page. So you select that and it automatically takes you to the page. Of course, you could type your command that you want, but if you want to say click here, I just select the, the word here and add the link to it, then of course it would take them to whatever you have linked it to. So I am going to exit preview mode and go back to the page that I am working in, demo page. And what I'm gonna do now is to show you how to add link to images. So you'll insert your image. You already know to do that from the previous lesson. I'm taking it from my device. That is the image. And of course you can change your section color, customize your section as you like. Once you select the image, once it's loaded, then automatically the taskbar would pop up. Or if it is, if it's something that you already had and you want to add the link to it, all you have to do is just select it and then the taskbar would pop up. You can crop it if you want. You could delete if you want, et cetera. So um, what I am going to do is to select the link, to add link. If it is to, it is saying next page. So adding the link to the next page, say for, for example, my next page is about me. You select about me and then you would select apply. Now, what if you don't want it? You can always select it and delete it if you want to edit it. Say, for example, it is an image that I want to add a URL to. Of course, take out that and you copy the URL and you paste it and then you select apply. So you could link it to other pages within your site, within your, your portfolio, or you could link it to an external um, URL. Okay, and that is basically adding links to pages, adding next pages, adding links to images, to text, etc. So again, you can use that to just, you know, improve the presentation of your site so that it is easily navigated by the users. No. I am going to now look at adding dividers. When I say dividers, just take a look at my site and I am going back to teaching records. Within teaching records, if you notice between the objective and this area, you're seeing this line. What this line is referred to is, as is the divider. So you're seeing that white space basically and the line. How do we add dividers? Going back to the workspace, and I want the divider to be directly after this se section. Let me put a color right here to um, basically distinguish or just add an image, select an image. I was going to select any image right there because I want to highlight the sections here so you can see it. Clearly, I'm going to put emphasis there. Emphasis as well. No specific um, image there. No specific reason for using those. I just want to, want to show you how, if it is that you don't use dividers, you'll find that everything will run into one. See, I want to add a divider between this section right here and the last section. So what I will do select the section where I want the divider to fall below and then select the divider. And if you notice, the line is now there to show that it is two different sections. Okay, so say for example, I want the divider to fall directly after this section, then I'll just select the section and select divider. What if the divider is not where you want it? Say for example, this divider is not where I want it to be. What I can do 
if you want to delete it, once you toggle over it, then you'll see the delete icon, the trash can appears to the left. If you want to pull it to somewhere else, once you get this four-way arrow, you select the press on your cursor and then you pull it to where you want it. So say, for example, I want it right here, I can just drop it right there, okay? And it depends on the image that you're using, the color scheme that you're using, you would notice that below this area, it is gray, the space there is gray, this one, the space is red and you're seeing the divider color a little lighter than the section color. So it depends on your theme that you're using. Then the, it basically depends on how the divider will appear when it is applied. What we're gonna look at now is collapsible group. Once you select it, then it automatically pulls up a new section on your page. And what this does is that say, for example, you, you have typed something, but you don't want everything to appear on your page. You wanna show less information on your page. It is up to the user. Once user wants to use it, then they would select it and then it will, will basically pull up all the information that they would want to see right there. So at the top right here, you're seeing collapsible. You can make it collapsible if you want or if not, you can turn it off. Once you turn it off, it indicates to you that it is no longer collapsible. So I want to make it collapsible. I'm just gonna just type some stuff right there. And then that, so at the top right here, this is your main title. And uh, below the main title, then you have some information that is presented and the user will, will not see the information as they enter the page. What they'll have to do is to select the title and it basically shows them the information that is within that group. So that is it. So once you exit the section, just click out of any other section, you would notice that there is a drop down arrow to the right. Once you select it, then it automatically pulls up the information within that group. Anywhere you select, it will pull up the information within the group. So that is the collapsible group. And you could look at it in preview mode. Basically, let's go down to that. Notice you're not seeing everything that is a part of it. You're seeing the arrow it shows that it is collapsible. Or some person would put instruction, click here to view more. And uh, once you click it, then the information is displayed. Like, share, and don't forget to subscribe.